If there's one concept that comes up over and over again in chemistry, it would probably be density. Density of solids, density of liquids, density of gases. It just seems to permeate the entire subject. Well, I've got a demonstration here that pertains to the density of a gas. But I'm going to start off with whoop, the liquid. The liquid is petroleum ether. Not regular ether, but petroleum ether, which is just really a mixture of pentane, hexane, heptane. And I'm going to pour maybe about five milliliters of it in this large flask. It evaporates pretty quickly, built up a vapor pressure. Sometimes it's enough to even make that little stopper go <laughs> popping out of there. Yep, see? <laughs> um, at, at room temperature, the vapor pressure of petroleum ether is around 400 torr, which is enough to make about a 60% petroleum ether vapor, 40% air mixture in there. The important thing about that mixture of vapors is that it's dense. Oh, there it goes again. It's a rather dense combination, okay? So, I've got a candle that I'm going to light here. And I put a little kind of a box there with aluminum foil around it, just so it's a little bit more secure in this demonstration. And I've got a, a ramp made out of some aluminum angle bracket, just from the hardware store, easy enough to get. And I'm going to see if I can't pour these vapors, just the vapors, not the liquid, just the vapors, down this ramp, see if I can put out that flame, okay? You may have seen a demonstration with this done with carbon dioxide. Let's see if this is able to do the same thing. Ready? So I'm just getting the vapors, not the liquid, and pouring it down. Whoa! I didn't put out the flame, did I? Well, I really wasn't expecting to. I told you this was a mixture of different hydrocarbons. Of course, they're combustible. So this is a very different effect than if I had poured carbon dioxide down. Now, a couple of uh, important tips about this. Notice that I was holding the ramp this way, not this way, okay? <laughs> Just make sure of that. <laughs> Take note of that. The other thing you saw, though, was that when the flame got back to the flask, I pulled it away. I didn't sit there with the flask still there. Well, I'm not going to show you what happens when I hold the ramp this way. <laughs> Sorry. But I am going to show you what happens when I don't pull the flask away, because there's a lesson to be learned there as well. So we're going to do the same demonstration, but this one is a little bit more um, presentable in the dark. So let's have the lights out right now. I'm pouring it right now. And you can see the flame kind of dancing in the bottle. Okay, now lights back on. So it persisted in there for a while. It really wasn't a hazard, as long as I didn't lose my nerve and go, ah, there's a flame in there, and throw it across the room. That would be unwise. It burnt itself out. Why? There's still plenty of fuel in there. You see the remaining petroleum ether? It obviously ran out of oxygen. Okay? Now, this is a nice demonstration called the flaming vapor ramp. These vapors traveled down and ignited back. But there's an important safety lesson to be learned that's connected with this. And that is, when you read a warning label on a solvent like kerosene or paint thinner that says only use in a well-ventilated area, avoid you know, any kind of flammable ignition sources, whatever, you better heed that warning. You might think, well, middle of winter, got the windows down, I'm cleaning out some paint brushes I use for painting with an oil-based paint. And it says that on there, said, well, I'll be okay as long as I don't bring any candle nearby or cigarette. I'll just be careful in that regard. Well, you're not being careful because you got rag soaked with it. There's evaporation off of it. These dense vapors are traveling off the table you're working at, across the floor, literally under a, a door to the basement, down the steps. And in the basement, what ignition source might it find? Maybe the pilot light of a furnace or a hot water heater. And then the flame literally can travel back up to the source, but the source would not necessarily be as contained as this, where it burn itself out. You have a pile of rags wet with paint thinner, and you've got a house fire in your hands. So 
I tell my students this is something that's, that's worth remembering, and they nickname this one the Invisible River of Death. <laughs> They're always very melodramatic. And they realize that this could even work if you had to travel down two flights of steps, okay? So this is a little bit more temperamental for the vapors to make the turn there. It has to be relatively still air. Um, I've actually had success with it going back and forth through four staircases, but we didn't, it was a little too breezy in here for that. So we're going to try this here. Um, same idea, lights about maybe halfway down, and I've got still enough liquid in there, generate enough vapors. So I'm just going to pour this. Is that going to work for me? There we go. Okay, the delay takes a while for those vapors to travel down there, and they're getting diluted during, during that time. So, but again, so the flaming vapor ramp, a wonderful illustration of density, of combustion, volatility, vapor pressure, it's got it all built into one. Thank you.